right? Awesome. Thanks, Kim. Well, I am super excited. I, this woman has not only been, um, I've known Lee Hennessy now for about a couple of years, right? Yes, so, and, yeah. Yeah. And, um, she's not only an agent, but she's, I, I do consider her as a dear friend as well. We've kind of built our relationship the last couple of years, but if you know me, I love all of you. So, um, <laughs> But thank you for, you know, for agreeing to, to come on this morning and, um, you know, and, and allowing us to get to know you on a deeper level as well. So we'll kick it off. Lee, give us a little bit of, you know, snippet of who you are. <laughs> um, I've been an agent for 11 years. Actually, I started at Keller Williams 11 years ago. I kind of migrated around and then made my way back to Keller Williams. Um, I'm a mom, so I try to balance mom and agent which isn't always easy um and then I have my own personal things I like to do like go to the gym so that's that's kind of me in a nutshell <laughs> work mom and gym <laughs> that's awesome no and you know what that's a lot as it is I I mean look I commend you at least you squeeze in the gym right I can't even yeah. get to that honestly yeah. um so that's amazing let's let's go ahead and dive a little bit I what did you do before real estate? So I worked, um, I stayed home for seven years. So when you stay home for seven years, it's kind of hard to get back into the industry that you were in before. They almost think like you, you didn't work, <laughs> even though being a mom is a lot of work, right? It's a full-time job. So before that, I, I was actually licensed um, with a brokerage firm. So selling stocks and bonds. Um, I was like the branch manager's assistant. So I help with clients and I help with administrative stuff. And um, that was like an early morning job. You started at 7 a.m. because we're based off the stock market. Right. Um, so that was good. But when you have little kids and daycare doesn't open that early, I was like, I can't go back and do that. You know what I mean? And I know I, I always loved, um, looking at houses. So I figured, okay, what, why don't I try getting into, you know, being a realtor? So on my own, I just, I found, I found how to go and take the classes. I took the classes, I booked my test, you know, and then I found somewhere to start and I kind of, you know, have been migrating my way ever since then. No, that's amazing. And you've been very successful too. Um, so when your first year of real estate, how did it feel? What were some of the, you know, what were some of the takeaways? I mean, looking 11 years back now, I mean, that first year, what were some of the things that you did and that you are doing differently now or still doing? Um, I think, well, you know what? I think if I could do it ever, because it's always hard to start. start. Starting is probably the hardest thing you know you always hear but oh this one agent started and he did all this business honestly some people have that personality that they're gonna talk to everybody because that's what it takes um but if you don't i think the best way for people to start is join a team so join a team but you want to ask that team questions you want to make sure that team is producing you want to make sure that team has a lot of lead sources and that they're not having you join them, hoping you're going to help them make money um, because you can end up in a situation where you're producing more than the, than the rainmaker or somebody else on the team. So you need to have some questions before you go in. You should be asking them questions, not just them asking you questions. You want to make sure that there's going to be business there for you. Do they have a lot of listings? Are you going to be able to do open houses where you don't have to go search for open houses because open houses are a great lead source. Right. No, absolutely. And I know for a fact that you're still doing open houses every week. All the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't always, I don't always want to, but it's, you know, when you want to make money, you're going to work. So right. that's what it comes down to really, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and aside from open houses, what other sources as a lead generation that you're doing? What other, what are the, um, well, I'm team? on, I'm on Karen Anderson's, the prestige team. So we're a big team and we already have a lot of lead sources in place. So we get leads that come in from, from different sources, but honestly, right now we're in a shifting market. A lot of those lead sources have dried up. So it's kind of, okay, back, back to basics. I need to be making my phone calls, calling the people I know, calling my past clients and making sure to even follow up on old leads that you haven't talked to. But the number one lead source for me, I think is right now is just open houses. And I do convert at open houses. So I know that that works for me, you know? 
Right, right. No, absolutely. So when you say that you do convert, I, I guess, what's the percentage of conversions that you, you feel that you do after an open house? Um, I don't, I don't think I've tracked like the rate. Um, if you have to guess, I think, I mean, I mean, from last year, maybe like a third was open houses and some of the stuff, the, the rest was other sources, but this year, like I said, with the shifting market, um, you know, that's a bigger focus. So like right now I have a client I'm closing today. Congrats. <laughs> One, $1.4 million purchase. So Whoa. I met them at an open house. I didn't sell them that house and they maybe wanted to sell their house. They changed their mind. They didn't sell their house, but they wanted to find a bigger house. So it was just the, how, how can I help you? You know, what are your goals? Let's get out there and look. I don't, a lot of people are super big on, is this person pre-qualified? And they want all these answers right away. I find that if you wait for that, you're going to, you're going to lose leads. Right. So get out there, show them something, show them some property, kind of get a sense of their financials. You know, maybe that first house you show them is too much, but then as soon as you have them talk to a lender, you're going to know, okay, we're, we're in the right range. Maybe they just need a little bit lower, you know? Right. But for these guys that everything, everything worked out and, you know, the house wasn't perfect. So there's always some, you know, issues in the transaction. And I feel like being an agent isn't just about sales. A lot of it is psychology. So it's holding the hands of people through the transaction because a lot of people get nervous. There's, there's things that they haven't dealt with, even if they've owned a house right. that may be in like, these people are jumping up to a, a much higher price neighborhood. So they're getting the cheapest house in the best neighborhood. Right. And that house is a fixer. So for just your average person walking into a house that's going to have like some foundation issues, HVAC issues, luckily the roof was okay, um, some plumbing issues, they need reassurances that you could help them deal with those issues. Man, that's insane. Can you guys believe 1.4 million and it's still a fixer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. who would have Southern thought? California. <laughs> I mean, literally, when you tell me 1.4 and you're like, and it still needs a lot of work, I, I like, yeah. it just blows my mind. So yeah. I, again, you know, I, I know like your, your, it sounds like your bread and butter is open house. Can you give me like just a, a rundown A to Z on you know, okay, we have an open house this coming up weekend. What is your strategy? What is your process? Because we do have quite a bit of brand new agents that's on this call right now. And I would love to share, you know, hear what you do. So maybe they can mimic that as well. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, like a lot of times we're so busy. I don't do the normal stuff I used to do. So what you should be doing is if you know, you're going to be doing a brand new listing, or even if it's been on the market for a little bit, go and door knock that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. on Friday, on Thursday, meet the neighbors, invite them to the open house. See, hey, do you know anybody who wants to move into this neighborhood? Have you ever thought about selling? But it gives you a reason to go and talk to these people like, oh, I'm selling the Joneses house down the street. Have you see it? Mm -hmm. You know, come by the open house, check out the house. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing I think is just being comfortable talking to people because when you're at that open house, like one of I think it was last weekend, there was six open houses like yeah. in the vicinity of the open house I was doing. So right. they're meeting five other agents that day. So what, what am I going to do talking to them to make an impression on them that I know what I'm doing, you know, and they should work with me. And so it's kind of trying to have conversations with those people, show them that, you know, the area, you understand the area, you know, these other houses that they're looking at. So that would be something else for you to do before you prep for an open house. Know what's on the market in that neighborhood. So when people are talking about, oh, the house on, you know, this other street, have you seen it? You can be like, oh, yes, I know that house. That house has this, this and that, you know, and this house I'm in has these other features. So you got to weigh it out, you know. Absolutely. No, absolutely. So door knocking. Um, what about to leave an impression when, when a client or when someone's coming through your open house and when they leave, what do you, do you give them anything or what are some of the feedback that you get? Like, wow, like I, you know, from other agents that's, that have met you and seen you at your open house, what are some of the feedback that they get? Like, I guess their aha moment in meeting you. Um, I, I don't, you know, everybody has a different style. Some people I've tried kind of like handing stuff out. I don't think that converts. So you spend a lot of time printing stuff that maybe it's going in the trash. Right. Um, I feel like 
making that connection with somebody is really what's going to make the difference in them connecting back with you. And also reaching out to them right away. Don't wait a week. If you wait a week, they might have already been contacted by another agent. So you have to like, even after the open house, text them, email them. Hey, thanks for coming by the open house. Really nice meeting you. Look forward to helping you. You know, it doesn't have to be anything long. And then just follow up again on Monday. But you right. want that connection like solidified so that they remember you, you know? Yep. And okay. especially seeming like you know the area because if there's if there's five other agents doing open houses, you know, they might not know the area as good as you or you might have experience in something that they don't. So you want to make an impression on people that you really you really know the area. For us and our team, we kind of go above and beyond what a lot of people do. So part of what we can do is we talk to people about like if like the listing I was out last week, the house needed some work. So I can talk to people. Hey, here's what you're, you should do with this kitchen. You're going to take out this upper cabinet, pull the kitchen out this way. You know, this is going to cost you roughly around this much. I have somebody that can do the floors for you. Here's what you can do the yard. You know, people don't always have those ideas. If you can kind of help them see what a house can be, mm -hmm. um, because we're not in a market where you have brand new homes. So you want to be able to give them all kind of advice, you know? No, absolutely. And, and I, I definitely um, agree with you that we have to, we're solution providers, right? I mean, yes, we're real estate agents, we are selling quote and unquote, but I think sometimes we forget that we don't have products to sell. We're not, we're not a target. We're selling we're, ourselves. We're selling ourselves. Exactly. And I think that's, it does get lost in translation on the day-to-day -day grind, right? And we've all been there, myself included, where I sometimes forget that I need to sell myself the way, you know, when, when you put yourself out there, you put the, your best effort out there. Exactly. No, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, okay. So open houses is, is uh, again, you know, it's such a, a huge, huge resource and, you know, it is. And, and honestly, this market, the way it's shifting is, you know, those people, maybe that were calling you before they've decided to hold off now and the leads, you know, that you have, they're not answering the phone now. <laughs> And the lead, the lead sources we have, we're not getting leads. So you really have to, you know, think, okay, where, where am I going to get the leads? And let me really focus in on that then. If that's working, let me do more of that. And you can even, I've done open houses on Friday evenings. I've done open houses during the week. You know, when you think people are coming home, you could do one from four to seven. Yeah. Um, so you sat there for four hours, you know maybe one or two people come in. If you got one lead out of that, then, Hey, you just made some money. So exactly. No. And I agree with you. I think I personally like the twilight ones because you do target those, that those individuals that are coming home from work. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, actually I feel like the twilight ones are probably more of the successful ones as well. I mean, I'm not knocking the weekend ones, but the twilight ones, I feel like they're, they're more serious people because they're going out of their way to go and see your property. Yeah. A right? lot of times. Yeah. A lot of times on the weekends, you know, I, I know for a fact that on the weekends, a lot of people is like, Oh, you know what? I have a free Saturday. Let's just go look at some homes. Right. Yeah. But, or you get, I mean, you get a lot of neighbors too, you know, oh, but, but the neighbors can be an opportunity to you talk to them. So just make conversation with everybody. With everybody. <laughs> exactly. No, agreed. Agreed. So I wanted to touch base a little bit on um, when during your open house, you stated that, you know, you, you send them a text message immediately or an email, but how do you coax a client to even leave that information because I know that there are it's hard other, right I can't even get them to you know you get their first name and you're lucky you even get their first name because some clients will just pass on by and <laughs> roll right out no, right? And, I'm, and I have those too and and I I feel people out so if there's somebody that buzzes through the open house in five minutes they're not they don't want to talk to me they might already have an agent and I don't right. I don't try to focus on that I hone in on the people that want to talk to me so the ones that I'm giving them ideas or I'm talking to them about the area, giving them some advice and they're listening. And I don't just straight up go like, oh, can I have your information? <laughs> you know, right. so we're, we're having a conversation. We're making a connection. I do ask them if they have an agent because I, I don't want to be that agent that tries to steal other people's clients. So I do right. ask them that question, you know, and if they say yes, I ask them who the agent is because I want to see if they're being serious, you know. I'm like, oh, okay, I know that person. Oh, I'm, I don't know. Maybe they're from another area, you know? Right, right. Um, And then I just say, hey, can I have your information? You know, maybe I have another house coming up that is what you're looking for, or I can help you get started. I would love your information. And so 
Um, that's how I get it. We actually do a sign in, but I feel like I do have a hard time getting people to sign in because they're like, they're doing it. They're like, do I have to answer this question? Can I just go in? So I do focus on the people I make a connection with. Yeah, no, absolutely. I get, and, and I totally agree because, you know, I think for them, the moment they have to fill in the questionnaire sheet, they're already kind of like, this is overwhelming. I've already yeah. seen 10 homes. I have already done this yeah. 10 times, right? So that's why I was curious if there's other methods out there that, you know, you're doing that's been so successful in your conversion. Yeah, I don't focus on everybody. And I think, you know, I, I had some great conversations with people last weekend that had agents, you know what I mean? And I was like, well, then maybe they learned something from me, you know? Yeah. And so I, I, there was even one couple that were like, I've been working with an agent for a year and a half. And in my head, I'm like, something's wrong if your agent has been helping you a year and a half and you don't have a house. But I didn't go there. I don't want to bash anybody. That's not my style. So I'm right. just like, well, you know, if it's not working, give me a call. Yeah, no, and that's one of your amazing virtue is integrity. I, again, I know that, you know, we've, we've, we've kind of gotten really close and, you know, I, that's the one, you know, one of your amazing, amazing traits is that you, you believe in integrity, you, you perform at the highest level and making sure that your clients feel very comfortable and trust you wholeheartedly. So let's kind of segue into a team. So you did touch base on that a little bit. You stated that, you know, as a new agent, you know, you join the team, ask all the questions. How did that even come about though? Let's say, for example, I'm a brand new agent. I just joined our organization and I am one weekend and I don't know anything. And I just listened to this video. I just, you know, I'm on here and I'm like, oh my God. So how do I even get started? And whose team do I even join? Right? Like, how does that, like, how does that even look like? Well, they would talk to you, Mary. <laughs> they would reach out to their team leader and they would say, hey, I am interested in joining a team. Mm -hmm. What team do you think I would be a good fit on? Are there any teams looking for people right now? Right. So that, that would be a start. But I think they, they themselves should have a list of questions that they have for the team. Because like I said, you can join a team and end up not producing. So right. it's not a guarantee. So you want to make sure you are joining a team that's going to have multiple lead sources for you. Um, I forgot the second part of your question. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no worries, no worries. Yeah, so it was just how, and then what, what else? Uh, so what else? What else, right, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you don't wanna join a team, then you need to be coming to the team meetings. You need to be meeting the other agents in the office who have listings. You wanna make friends with those agents, and then you wanna ask them if you can host the open house for them. You wanna make sure that you're responsible that you're showing up on time, you're staying the full, never, ever, ever leave an open house before the time allotted. People show up right at four, people show up at 405, 410. Um, so you wanna show this agent that you're really responsible, make sure to give them feedback of the open house. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people came through? Were they neighbors? Were they buyers? What were people's comments on the house? So that you can give that agent feedback because that's gonna give that agent, okay, this, this person's serious. Maybe I'll use them again to host my open houses. Right. No, agreed. Absolutely. And then when you're on a team, let's let's uh, kind of look at the day of your day, right? From, yeah. from when you start to the day that you end. When you're on a team, I know it is a little bit different than you are as a solo agent. And have you ever been a solo agent before? I have. Okay, so great. So are you able to, can you decipher the difference between being on a team and being a solo agent? Um, I think for me, the difference of being on the team is I have more accountability. So when you're on your own, you're like, I'm just going to go run my errands in the middle of the day. <laughs> I'm going to go, hey, I need to go, you know, if you're working from home, I'm going to go do some laundry. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it's very easy to get sidetracked off of what you're supposed to be doing. Agreed. Um, so on our team, like I come in the office Monday through Friday, Mary sees me, even if I work open house Saturday, Sunday, I'm still almost always in the office unless I'm, you know, on a vacation or something. Right. Um, and that's important. You want to have that consistency in your work. So you want to be able to you're going to work from home. Then what's your, what's your work schedule where you're just going to focus on work? What hours are you going to be calling from the people, you know, the people you met, you know, maybe working on social media and 
anything else you need to be working on, the things that you need to learn if you're still learning about contracts. So make a schedule for yourself and, and follow that schedule and stick to it because that's what's going to help you really transition if you're part-time, full-time into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know we talk about it all the time, every almost on a daily basis, consistency, right? And, and having a strong foundation, making sure that we're doing it um, regularly, not the one-offs, right? Yeah, um, so, you, can't, no, you can't work two days a week and make it. It's not going to work. You know, no, you, you really have to be involved and you have to be giving it 100%. Well, real estate is a 24, what is it? 24 seven job yeah, right? yeah. or business, I should say. We're the only industry that, you know, we work around the clock no, no matter what. So now how do you handle those clients that, and I know you get phone calls at night. I know you get phone calls early in the morning. How do you navigate through that? And how do you set that expectation with the clients? Um, I think that's a personal decision. So for me and Karen, we're pretty much available whenever to our clients. So if we have a nervous client that texts us and we're awake at 10 a.m., we're going to answer them. Mm -hmm. um, I know agents who, you know, say like, well, maybe I'm having family time from, you know, eight on. So I'm going to shut my phone off. You should still maybe check your check your messages, because a lot of times if you have people that are a first time buyer and they're nervous, they just need that reassurance. Sometimes if it's something that you can tell them, hey, can I get back to you in the morning? then that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, also like going on vacation or whatever you're doing, just keep in mind, those people are expecting you to be professional and respond back to them. Right. And even though they may be texting you at odd hours, we as agents work odd hours. So if you're not going to respond to them, some other agent they meet will. So that's how I think of it. And that's why I think with us, we just try to always give people some kind of answer. Like if I can't talk now, Hey, can I text you back or call you in an hour or whatever the situation is so that they know you're not forgetting about them. Right. No, absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. Once they feel neglected, they're going to move on. Yeah. Yeah. If they meet somebody else, that's going to answer their calls and you're not, you know what I mean? Yep. It makes a difference. Yeah. So so you, you mentioned that you've been on several teams before, which is amazing because all those the experiences, the knowledge that you've accumulated, I mean, I, I can't even imagine just that whole all came together and kind of form who you are today. Um, those, all those experiences, can you kind of, kind of give us a little snippet of each and every team? You don't have to tell us who's team, but just a yeah, little- Yeah, a lot of them work for KW still, so- <laughs> Hey. I don't want to name names. No, don't. Um, you know, there's a, like KW model is, is get a team, build a team. Okay. Absolutely. So a lot of people want to do that, but they think the team is going to make them money. They think these people are going to go out. They're going to find the leads on their own. They're going to go do open houses. Then we're going to split that money. And mm -hmm. you cannot look at it like that. If you are a team leader, you have to be able to provide for the agents underneath you. Now, not to say they shouldn't work on business on their own too, but you have to be able to give them opportunities to make money. Otherwise, why are they on your team? Right. You know? So like I joined one team with an, um, an agent and their team had a model where they were doing a lot of flips for people. Um, and they weren't all in this area. So you would be going to the, like we're in the South Bay, I'd be going to the Valley or somewhere else. And it just, um, I think the market market was a little slower then. And it just, the I just wasn't converting those people I would meet at the open house and there was no other lead sources. The only lead source was the open houses. Mm -hmm. So that didn't work out <laughs> for me. You know, you're like, okay, yeah. this, this is not, I'm not making money. So this is not working. And then, um, I was on another team and, and that team, I, I realized I was producing more than the other person. So I was like, well, it doesn't make sense. And then also I think you, as an agent, you grow. So I'm not a buyer's agent. I do both listings and, and buyers, and sometimes on teams, they want you as a buyer's agent. And that's not the role I wanted anymore. So for me, I was like, okay, this isn't working for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I went back on my own. But but I realized for me, on my own, I don't always do the activities I need to do. So I function better on a team. And I, I, I'm better in that environment. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I, I mean, last year, you had one of your biggest year, I believe. 
Yeah. 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 And I mean, how did that feel knowing that you, when you closed 2022, you know, it was one of your best year, you closed it with a bang and how did that feel? And, and what, what that feeling and that momentum, like now that we're here in a shifting market, how does, uh, how does that kind of, you know, translate to who you like to what you're doing now? Um, last year was great. I think anybody who's been an agent, for a while knows the last couple of years was not sustainable. So that had to change. So I worked my ass off last year because I knew I better make money while the money's there. Mm -hmm. So every opportunity I had, I jumped on it. Even if I was working seven days a week and I know some people don't want to work seven days a week, but when the opportunity to make money's there, if you're serious, you're going to, you're going to do that. You're going to do what it takes. So that's why I did. I think I did 26 transactions last year. That's a lot. You know what I mean? So it wasn't, it wasn't all sales. There were some leases in there. Um, but that was a lot of driving, a lot of, a lot of work. I I lost some clients last year too, because the market was so crazy. So, you know, I think you just have to, and that that's always hard and you take it personally, but I feel like the way the market was last year, people felt like their agent couldn't do it. What, what were they going to do? They had to figure it out themselves because mm-hmm. their agent couldn't help them get a house, you know, because they're getting beat out constantly. So they would jump ship. So I think I had one, Karen and I had one that did that. Um, but for the most part, people stay with me and they're very happy, you know, but that, so transitioning last year to this year, um, the momentum, we were still kind of busy January, then February, it was like things just slowed down, especially when the second rate height hit, hit it, it was like, what happened? Where's our leads? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. And even the open houses were dead. We're like doing this open house and like three people came through or two people, you know? So that was tough. But what prepared me for that was last year, I did not spend all that money I made. I saved a lot of money and I put money aside. So when I had some leaner months this year, because the market was shifting, I had money to see me through that. And that's something that's really important is when you start making money, do not go spend it all. You need to pay taxes. (laughs) You need to put money in savings and then you should pay yourself. But that's Mm -hmm. not like, oh, let me go buy a Gucci purse because I just closed a big deal. You know, you have to be smart with your money. That's part of being an agent too. And making that money last because- when you're newer, you're not going to close a house every month. So how can you sustain that money to make you last a whole year? You know what I mean? Right. No, absolutely. And and you're right. As an agent, our, our salary or our paycheck is a roller coaster, right? It's up, it's down, it's, you know, in circles. And no, I, and I agree with you, you know, if, if you're not, if you're not watching your finances, I mean, your business, we're all CEOs of our business. So we got to be watching our, our P and L's, right. Our expenses, yeah. our profits, and, and we have to pay ourselves. I, that's another important thing is as business owners, sometimes we give so much to our business that we forget. We, we take away zero at the end of the day. And that's not possible. That, that, yeah. that cannot be possible. Right. No, that's, I mean, it's, it's so it's so scary to even think that that does exist. And Lee, you and I, we've seen it. We've seen someone close a transaction, take that commission check and blow it all in one shot. Right. And then tax season seven. I've seen that like, a lot. And then like a month right. later, they're like, oh my God, I'm broke. And you're like, right. How are what you happened broke? to your money? Right, exactly. And, you know, and, and fortunately, you know, we're, we're in an organization, like all of our market center, that it's all of us that's on this call now. I mean, that's the one thing that we always want to make sure that you're being... Uh, I guess kind of we're giving you some tidbits on making sure that, you know, you don't put yourself in that situation anymore, but um, absolutely, yeah, well, I, wow, I can't believe it. 30 minutes just went by so quick. So word of advice from Lee Hannessy to all of us and especially to our newer agents as well. What are your advice um, for them? Um, I think if you're struggling getting started, do open houses. So You want to find out who the agents are in your office who have listings and you want to be friendly with them. And if it's not in your office, call other people from other offices, other agencies. Sometimes they'll say no, but okay, you move on to the next one, you know, because you need to find those open houses. And there are some agents that do not like sitting their own open houses. Mm -hmm. So if you can kind of be their go-to person, then, then you're going to be set getting that opportunity. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Well, and in your guys' team is, you know, you guys are notorious in making sure that, you know, you spread that or, you know, kind of spread the wealth, so to speak, right? Uh, you guys sometimes have three, four open houses a weekend and you yeah. all can't handle that. <laughs> so. 
So yeah, so we do we do occasionally use other people too on our team, even though we have a team because mm -hmm. if, if there's so many open houses, there's not enough of us to cover. Right. Them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for bringing up team meetings as well. Team meetings are a great, great place for agents to meet other agents. If you're exactly. like, I don't know who that agent is, then you need to start showing up to team meetings because yeah. you, I can promise you, if you go to your team meetings, you're going to see your rainmakers, your top producers, your big teams are all there because yep. that's how we all get to know each other. So, but thank you so much, you guys. I am so, so um, honored, Lee. Thank you for, for accepting uh, to do this as well. We really do appreciate you. We're very grateful to be in business with you. Um, and uh, any questions for Lee before we go? Well, everybody's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all have open houses lined up for this weekend. <laughs> exactly. That's right. All right. Well, have a great, great Friday. Have a great weekend. Um, go out there and like I always say, kick some butt and make some money. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Bye, you guys.